Hey guys, welcome to the gun shop. We had a look at the English Fields Mark 60 by Maruku at Iwa. We just had our first one land in stock. Now I'm gonna have a proper look. Come on in. So first things first, it comes in the same hard case as the Mark 60 High Pheasant. It's a real nice addition to the Maruku lineup to give you a hard case. Obviously, traditionally, they were the one that gave you the cardboard box. Two combo locks, and you open it up, and there it is. This absolutely stunning Mark 60. The first time in my life, I have seen these corduroy BC Maruku pajamas. I don't need to show you anymore, do I really? Sold on that alone. Okay, let's uh, show you the rest of this gun. First things first, and the, notices, the differences I noticed between this and the one that we saw at Nuremberg. Firstly, the one at Nuremberg was really, really exceptionally heavy. This gun is £7.12, so it's sub eight. The other one was over eight. And as such, this gun feels that much more lively for it. I believe the wood on this as well, is just significantly nicer. That one at Ewa didn't do anything for me. This, on the other hand, really does. Starting at the back, we have a Packmire decelerator sporting clays, uh, denoting that you have this plastic bit at the top. I think I said in Ewa, the first thing I do is just take a little bit of sand out and just finish that off a little nicer, although it is hand fitted to the wood and the fit is exceptional. Into the walnut, you have American walnut stock in grade five. By comparison between this and the one that I saw at IWA, they are chalk and cheese. So obviously you only buy one that you like the look of and there's clearly gonna be a bit of variation in the wood. Some lovely fiddle back running through here. And like with all Mark 60 grade fives, you have a beautiful variation of color through yellows, oranges, reds, browns. And I mean, that kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Silver oval, swept back pistol grip there, same as a Mark 60. Nice, feels a hand lovely, very versatile. Silver fixed trigger, auto safety fitted as standard. And now we get onto the action. The action is kind of where the first bit that's particularly exciting, not that the fact they put a recoil powder on a Maruku isn't exciting, is this. This is a deep carved scroll that covers the entire action, which is a very new move for Maruk uh, to move off of a their standard pattern. It is. Absolutely stunning. And in fact, the lighter wood on this gun sets it off significantly better than the darker wood than we saw before. So looking closely at the engraving, actually all the joins and everything are done really nicely. It is hand finished and you can quite clearly see uh, the graver push marks and multiple cuts and half cuts and such, just on some of the larger beveled edges, just to give it that little bit nicer catching the light effect. The whole thing looks a little bit deeper for it. However, if you can look past it and actually get really very close, it is lacking in detail somewhat. However, I don't think this is one of those guns that you want to stick your face in. This is a good gun just to sort of admire and enjoy from every angle, not to put a magnifying glass over. If you want that, go buy an old English gun and look at the tight rows and scrub. The forend, American style rounded forend, really nice addition to the Mark 60s, although it's been on the, obviously the 725 for a little while. All hands checkered because, you know, it's a Maruk and that's what you get. Lead shot only. Uh, this is because it is fixed choke. Before we get there, let's have a little look at the barrels. So what you get is you get a beautiful jeweled faces there in the jeweled ejectors. 18.4 bores, so they're nice tight bores, and fixed chokes. More importantly, you have solid midrib and solid top rib, so you get that really beautiful English style finish. That's all a much more classic look to the gun. And I must admit, I really like the way these look. However, the chokes are too tight for steel shot, uh, so it's lead shot only. You can obviously get those bored out and the tubes will more than likely take steel. However, I cannot attest that, that is a good thing to do. Rib, parallel six mil. Very nice. Single bead side as well, single bead side. Before we go any further, I should say that this gun is gonna retail at around the three and a half thousand pound mark. It balances exceptionally, absolutely exceptionally over the hinge pin. You couldn't ask for much more than that for three and a half thousand pounds. A well-rounded gun that will shoot just anything you could ever want, 
apart from steel. Um, and obviously I'm biased because it's a Maruku. It's the little things that really do pull it together. Obviously a nice piece of wood help, that little bit of extra weight just makes it feel more planted. And for those of us who are either a little larger or spend a majority of their time buying a clay gun, this is gonna feel that much more familiar. In fact, I quite happily use this as a clay gun. I love the drop points. I love the single silver trigger. I love the solid mid and top ribs. I love the rounded forend. I, I really genuinely like everything about this gun. It comes up really well, a little higher than a Mark 60 standard. Uh, and it just feels like more of a gun. It comes up, for those of you who want to know, a lot more like a Mark 38 TIG Sporter. A little higher, a little bit more cast, and it is just spanking. I really like it. I'm not sure whether personally I can get my head around the engraving now that I've had a really close look at it. I feel like a lot of engravers, they've kind of just gone and made something really pretty without then putting in the extra effort. And I understand that it's not seven or eight grand or 10 grand or 12 grand. I don't know, actually, I'd get over it. It is stunning, it really is stunning. Problem is I really, really like the grade five before. But this, the English field, I really like too. So this gun is a 30 inch fixed stroke 12 bore. There is no signs of any other specs yet. However, they are obviously going to be discussed. It does smell a little bit browningy, but I don't actually feel like that's a bad thing. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this good look over the Mark 60 English Fields. It really is a lovely new addition to their range. And I never thought I'd say this, but I actually think I almost prefer it a little bit to their Mark 60 High Pheasant, which is kind of one of my favorites they do. And I think that's purely based around the versatility that the slightly shorter, slightly more nimble gun will give you. And it is. Nimble. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Nimble anyway for a gun that's nearly eight pounds. You've got to take this thing into perspective and that all comes down to the balance. So if you like a gun that balances well and you like a gun that looks like this, who wouldn't? Go get one. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.